right, our last little demo for this week uh, was to do shingles. So we've got the example on the side of the house here that's just barely peeping into the same research image. I'm mixing my burnt umber with a touch of that Payne's Gray or Prussian Blue that I really like to cool down my browns. And I'm using a flat brush to kind of slide along where the shadow underneath the line of shingles would be and then to pull it down in kind of a choppy manner. Quick perspective refresher. You can see that all of these like wrap around the edge of the building. They start at the same height and then they disappear to the same vanishing point. If you need help drawing that, remember vanishing points are very helpful. So next step I'm going to do is mix just a little bit of a darker color by adding more of that Payne's Gray and Prussian Blue in and using that to really define my lines underneath the edge of these. Uh, it would be easy to, for those to get lost as we're painting, and since we went to the work of tracking the perspective on them, we want to keep track of them. So by going ahead and painting them in darker, even though I'll have to go over it again in a little bit, it does help to kind of like keep them there and keep them from disappearing, like you've lost your drawings a couple times, I'm sure. So I've turned the piece upside down because we're now pulling from the bottom of the shingle up, so I want the heaviest amount of paint where I put down my brush at the bottom of the shingle and then I'm feathering it towards the top of the shingle. This is a little bit of white with a little bit of blue and quite a bit of blending medium. It's pretty translucent. So now I've got a little bit of a translucent with some sienna to add some spots that are warm. We're going for like variations of the wood tone of these shingles and also to help them feel weathered and worn in different ways. The front half of the house altogether is a little bit darker in this image and then the side has more of the white and the highlights and the kind of bleaching to it. So as I'm using my brush here, I'm using it very dry. I'm picking up paint from the side of the page. You can see it's not even wet, it's not, not glossy. And one of the things that I'm doing is making sure to spread the bristles out sort of with my fingertip before I feather up with them so that I'm getting a choppier effect. So I don't want a nice unified, beautiful rectangular shaped brush. I want one with a little bit of like texture at the end. So you can kind of fix that if your brush starts going back together by just brushing your finger along the edge and working drier. Going back in and doing those shadows again not as you don't want a perfectly straight line because the shingles are going to kind of come in and be ever so slightly different so you can allow a little bit of variation in your line there and then i take my brush while that line is still a little wet and pull down from it so we're pulling the shadow from right underneath the bottom of the shingles onto like the bottom 50 percent of the one underneath it so the tops of the shingles are all shaded darker the bottoms of the shingles will be shaded just lighter and those mid-tones are showing through. Since these are a little long, I'm doing like a one line at a time or even half a line at a time and then feathering it down with a slightly damp, clean brush. Um, if I tried to do all of them, they wouldn't be wet by the time I got back to them. So we're picking and choosing where to bump up my contrast in these. I don't want to show every single break of the shingles but I want to imply that there are some so bumping up the under shadows and also adding these little vertical lines to show where some of those shingles might break up and allowing them to be starker more obvious on the front remember when you're working in perspective as you work towards that left side those lines are going to get closer together you can also, this is a clear kind of with a lot of water wash to help warm up and unify that whole front side. As I mentioned, it's got a lot less of the weathering on it. It allows this, the left side to be a little bit more weathered and stand out. I hope that that helps. Good luck.